Hello everyone and welcome to round 6 of the 2020 FIDE candidates tournament. Uh, it's the leader uh, of the tournament so far, Yanni Pomnishi versus Ding Liren. Uh, so it, it's a really incredible game, uh, let's just dive straight into it. And uh, before we do, uh, there's a nice photo uh, of the two of them. There you can see Nepo arriving at the game uh, with his uh, thermos bottle. And you can see he, ha he has the uh, nice fancy big chair, whereas Ding prefers the, the uh, smaller blue one. Uh, so let's just enjoy that for a second and uh, we're off to uh, what, what uh, is definitely a great game. Uh, so let's check it out. Uh, Nepo with the white pieces opens with e4. And we've already seen what Ding goes for uh, on e4 in this tournament. And uh, their head-to-head -head score so far in classical chess is one, uh, one victory each uh, plus seven draws. And uh, with, uh, with Nepo being some, somewhat better in rapid chess. Uh, so that being said, e5, knight f3, knight to c6, and again bishop to b5. The rule opus is on the board. Uh, most likely, uh, Nepo was ready for Ding to go for the same line he went against Maxime uh, in that, that uh, very nice game Maxime won. So a6, Morphe's defense, bishop to a4, and knight to f6. Uh, we have castles by Nepo, bishop to e7, and now rook to e1 was played by Maxime against Nepo, uh, also in the candidates tournament, but here Nepo goes, uh, sorry, against Ding, uh, but here Nepo goes for d3 transposing into a different line, but one that uh, Ding also uh, very often plays. Uh, we have b5, bishop to b3, and d6 now. Uh, a3, making room for the bishop on a2. We have castles by Ding, and now knight to c3. Knight to a5, going after the bishop as usual. Bishop back to a2, and now bishop to e6, countering uh, white slide square bishop, uh, and b4. Uh, we have bishop captures on a2, uh, rook captures on a2, and now knight back to c6. Uh, and here uh, we have bishop to g5, waiting for Ding to, to figure out what to play. And here I'm just going to show you how uh, how Nepo, Nepo reacts in positions like these. So sometimes he likes to uh, stalk his prey from a safe distance, as you can see here. There Ding is uh, thinking about the position and Nepo behind his chair, uh, checking what he's doing. Uh, sometimes he gives him the deadly stare, uh, you, as you can see here. Uh, really not, not comfortable, probably. Uh, thinking about the position when someone's staring it, at you like that. Uh, and sometimes he likes to circle his prey like this. There you can see. Uh, so uh, now that uh, we've seen that, uh, let's continue the game. So bishop g5 and Ding continues with queen to d7. It's a uh, move usually played here. And now, of course, Nepo wants to uh, use the d5 square for his knight. So bishop captures on f6, bishop captures and knight to d5 now. Uh, getting the knight to, to an excellent square. And now a5. Uh, and now this position has been reached before, Ding, is, uh, play, Ding plays this very often. It's been shown that uh, knight captures and captures doesn't really do all that much for white. So uh, this position has been reached by Ding twice in top tier games. He had it once against MVL and he had it once against Carlsen. And both of them played C4 here. Uh, the game against Carlsen he lost, he was in the, the 2017 uh, St. Louis Championship Showdown, but uh, against Maxime, uh, when Maxime played c4, it was last year in London Chess Classic, he drew that game. But here Nepo prepared rook to b2, and rook to b2 is a new move, so it is as of move 16 that we have a completely new game. And here Ding has to figure out what is this rook to b2 idea uh, doing here, as most likely Ding, uh, Ding knows all the lines that uh, follow after pawn to c4. So rook to b2, a uh, new move, uh, Ding decides that he's going to capture on b4, we have 8 captures, and now bring the bishop back to d8. Uh, now to simply control this knight a little bit better, uh, now uh, the, the knight, uh, all, all of the squares are pretty much covered by the bishop, uh, so uh, not allowing the exchange. And now c4. So what's what's the difference here? Uh, Ding goes knight to d4. He offers uh, Nepo the chance to double up his pawns in the center, and Nepo goes for it. We have knight captures, pawn captures, and now queen to c2. Uh, and Ding goes rook to e8. You could kick away the knight right away, but you can do that always. So uh, Ding uh, not in a rush to do anything like that. Rook to e8 first, uh, and now g3 with ideas of uh, expanding with f4 maybe later in the future. Uh, b captures on c4 by Ding, we have queen captures on c4, now going after the pawn here, but now c6, pushing back the knight, knight to f4 and bishop to g5 now, threatening to bust open white's position here, so knight back to e2 with a double attack on the pawn here, and now Ding finds the excellent d5. So we have e captures on d5 and now uh, c captures on d5. 
uh, just uh, grabbing the pawn back and uh, saying that okay this is now guarded by a tactic if you capture here then bishop to f6 just wins, wins the game on the spot so after c captures and d5 we have queen back to b3 and now Ding says, okay, uh, you, you, your position is a little bit better. I have a double D pawn here. You have a very nice pass pawn here, uh, but I'm, I can push on the king side and you can. So h5, he wants to play h4 and h3. For example, if this pawn gets, gets to h3, there will be some checkmating ideas here uh, possible. So Nepo says, I'm not worried about that. Let's just start pushing the pass pawn. So b5, we have h4 b6 by nepo and h3 by ding uh, and here first king to h1 uh, saying that uh, i always want to have the option of playing knight g1 to cover df3 square uh, so it's going to be a bit bit safer now so for example if a queen to f5 now you could either go knight g1 but you can also go f4 just push the bishop back bishop to f6 and now b7 rook ab8 and now knight to g1 uh, you're nicely covering all of the squares here. Uh, pawn covers this, knight covers this. You're going to bring your knight to f3. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good position for white. So after king h1, Ding decides to first block the rook with rook uh, f to b8. Sorry, rook e to b8. Uh, and now uh, again, you don't want to play something like captures and allow this pin with bishop to f6. So instead, rook f to b1 by Nepo. Uh, now uh, adding more defenders to the to the uh, pawn here. Uh, and now bishop back to d8 threatening just to capture the pawn and here uh, instead of b7 attacking for the rook and rook a5 it's uh, very hard to see how white takes advantage of this position uh, because the, this rook is nicely protected uh, it's it's hard to, to, to see how you would be able to push away uh, anything from there and and any capture here will again be met with a nice pin with the bishop to f6 so instead nepo goes for queen to b5 saying okay if you trade now let's say captures captures and rook b7 not allowing you to push then i capture here i'm gonna capture here i'm gonna play knight g1 capture here and slowly but surely i'm gonna pick off uh, all, all of your pawns and have a have a better end game uh, but uh, this is actually maybe maybe even the best case scenario for Ding. Uh, Ding knows that uh, he can only be worse in this endgame and he already started with two losses uh, so he decides to go for queen to g4. Now threatening queen f3 check followed by queen to g2 checkmate. Uh, but feel free to pause the video and uh, figure out what you would play here for white. It, it's a very interesting position. Uh, well I'll give you a couple of seconds and have a nice sip of my water. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, there are two moves basically which uh, which prevent knight g1 also prevents it, but it's a, it, it's a pretty slow idea. So it's basically between uh, queen captures here and queen checks uh, followed by captures here. So both of them keep an eye on the f3 square, which is what you have to do. So for those of you who found queen to e8 check, uh, congratulations, that is the absolute best move. Uh, but Nepo played queen captures on d5 check, although we can't really blame him because uh, to understand why this is better than just capturing here, uh, I I'm going to show why, but it's it's impossible to, to figure it out. So uh, point is after this check, king h7, queen captures on f7. Now, of course, you guard f3. Now rook to b7, trying to deflect the queen from the from the defense of the f3 square. Now you capture on d5, again covering this square. And now after, well, this rook is again un under attack, rook a to b8. You're going to play f3, kick away the queen, and after queen g5, offering a queen trade or something, you just capture on d4. And now you claim that you're up three pawns in a completely winning position, and black doesn't really have any counterplay. So this is the point uh, after queen to e8 check. But Nepo played queen captures here, saying that it's pretty much the same idea. If you don't do anything, uh, I still have a target on f7, so maybe I can use that later. And uh, I'm not leaving this diagonal for, for anything. Uh, but the problem is, now Ding has rook to a5, uh, now just uh, trying to kick away the queen, uh, and Nepo finds queen to c6. And it seems like a perfectly good idea, nothing really changes, Nepo still has control of the f3 square, but here Ding has a line so impressive, so devious, so so impossible to spot uh, and that line is the reason why that uh, queen to e8 check followed by f7 was better than queen captures on d5. So feel free to pause the video and try to find this uh, disgusting line that, that we speak of. Uh, well, I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, your your powers of calculation equal those of, those of a super engine. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's rook captures on b6. 
uh, and here uh, it's just incredible what happens. Point is that after rook captures on b6, you play queen captures on e2. Uh, and now uh, there's really only one good move here for white, that's rook to b8, threatening to capture here. But now you have rook to e5, this is, this is incredible. Rook captures here with check, king to h7, and here white is without a good move because uh, black is threatening queen to e1, you, you will give up the queen and then just deliver checkmate. Uh, so not, not uh, for example, if something silly like this, check, you give up the queen uh, and it's mate because the pawn prevents the king from reaching the g2 square. So what you would have to do here after king to h7, there really is, is no good move here. There, if you go rook to g1, uh, then you allow queen captures on f2, and again, it's just uh, better for black. For example, rook e2 followed by rook captures on h2 will be mate, a uh, best case scenario. So what white can do after king to h7 is only rook to h8 check, and go for this king captures, and now queen to c8 with check. King h7, you pick off the h3 pawn with check, and now king g6 by black. Uh, and here we have this position where white is up a pawn, but uh, how are you defending this pawn? So queen f1, you defended, yes, but now queen f3 check, king to g1 and rook to e2 now, uh, blocking the, the defense of the uh, d3 pawn. Also, uh, there's the uh, there's the threat of rook captures here if, if white, for example, defends it with rook to d1, but there is no better way to do it. For example, if rook d1, you can just capture here, queen captures, captures here with check, and now after queen f1, uh, we basically reach an endgame queen and three pawns against queen and three pawns, uh, a dead draw. So this is uh, this was in the position, and this is the only reason that uh, queen to e8 check followed by captures was better than queen to d5, because here Ding has this resource. Unfortunately for Ding, he didn't spot it. He played the rook to c5 instead, again tries to get the queen away from uh, the f3 square, uh, but now Nepo has queen to e8 check, king to h7, and now not capturing on f7, but rather knight to g1, just keeping an eye on the f3 square like this, uh, and also the pawn keeps an eye on this square. So that uh, king to h1 move, incredibly important that, that Nepo found. Uh, and here, uh, Ding decided to go for rook captures on b6 now. Perhaps now was a bit too early, maybe uh, maybe keep an eye on the pawn with queen to g6 and then try to, uh, try to ride out the storm, but uh, it's very unlikely. After b7, you could go for queen captures on d3 now, and after queen captures here, bishop to f6. And now... Okay, you do have a passed d pawn, maybe maybe something can come of this. Uh, but Ding played rook captures on b6. Now tries to trick Nepo again, uh, because now, uh, again, you have to you have to figure out what you do here. Uh, if rook captures on b6 now, then okay, r bishop captures, and you cannot capture the other bishop, because if you do, then rook to c1, with the threat of rook captures knight, followed by queen to d1, which will result in mate. So you would have queen to e4 with check. Uh, and uh, here we would basically have another draw. Queen captures, d captures, uh, and d3 now. Uh, the rook would have to block it, but now rook to d1, and the problem for white is that even though he's up a piece, there's no getting the knight or king into the game. For example, f4, you can never get the knight into the game because the rook just pins it, and you can never get the king into the game because of this pawn. So here, we, we could even... Uh, maybe create a pass pawn here, start pushing it, but it doesn't matter. For example, e6, king f8, uh, rook d7 blocking, but now g5. And the white the white has no way of uh, improving the position. You cannot move the king, the knight, nothing. Uh, if, if you just do something like this, king e8, rook d7, not much to do. d2 is coming, and it's still uh, no way for, for white to improve. Uh, g4, for example, king back to f8, and now you, you can never you can never move the rook away from the d file because of just the rook captures knight, and then you promote a queen. So really tricky idea by Ding, but Nepo doesn't go for rook captures here. Nepo instead goes for queen captures here, and now it's a bit different because now he says you do your thing. Uh, after all is said and done, I always have queen to h for check, and it is it is true. Here Ding played rook captures on b2. We have rook captures on b2, and now rook to c1 with the same threat of captures followed by mate, uh, however, uh, queen to h4 with check. And now Ding has nothing more to do. Captures, captures, we have this uh, endgame now, and rook to d1. So it's a similar position to the one we've just shown, where, Nepo, uh, where Ding can pretty much force a draw, because the knight and king can never enter the game. Uh, but here, Nepo says, I'm just going to play f3. 
uh, and here now he shows uh, that uh, now uh, he's ready to play this he's ready to pick up this pawn and uh, well slowly but surely somehow even wiggle his way in get rid of this pawn uh, but mostly black will not have anything to do for example if king g6 you're gonna go rook b4 and now if you don't want to start losing material you have to play something if you capture here now the f3 pawn serves as protection against uh, uh, capturing h3 so now you can capture on h3 and, uh, well, not much you can do here. Rook captures here, king g2, and now you can't go back because of knight f4 check, picks up the rook, so you'd have to go back. Uh, and then after rook captures this, it's just uh, a, a full piece up. It's, of course, completely winning for Nepo. So Ding uh, thought about the position uh, some 10 minutes uh, after uh, after Nepo played f3, but then decided not to continue the game and then move forward just as he reached time control. Uh, I mean, without even reaching time control, he has to make one more move to reach time control. He decided to resign the game. So really a terrible tournament for Ding so far uh, with three losses, but an incredible tournament for Nepo. Three wins, uh, which is incredible. Uh, and as he was the leader after uh, the fifth round, he now extends his lead as he again won a game. And he is that closer to facing Magnus Carlsen in the 2020 World Chess Championship match. Uh, and as Carlsen, uh, as Nepo is the only person uh, amongst the candidates who has a positive result against Carlsen in classical games, he has, I believe, four wins against Carlsen and only one loss. It would be definitely uh, a challenge to promote. So we'll see what happens. It's still young. The, the tournament is still young. We haven't even reached uh, reached half of it. Uh, so. Any, anything can happen. Now, Nepo had Nepo had some tournaments where he started with plus three and then he just finished on 50%. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I, I really do hope he continues, but uh, as you know, in chess, anything can happen. So that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Simon Johansson, Harry Willis, Gleb Kopchenkov, uh, Randall Ingersoll, uh, and David Dunn for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the FIDE Candidates Tournament. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent start of your week.